welcome back. back. It's now two minutes away from seven o'clock, and I promised before the break, we have been joined by Canon Leroy Flowers to talk about the meaning of Easter. Good morning, and welcome. welcome to the show. Good morning, and thanks very much, and good morning to all in TV land. Mm -hmm. Now, Canon Flowers, uh, Easter, uh, where did this uh, really originate from and the celebration of it? Okay, Easter, as we are very much aware, is at the time when the Jews were celebrating the Feast of the Passover, when Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem, mm -hmm. as we believe, as Scripture teaches us, where and when he was betrayed and um, falsely accused and tried mm -hmm. and was condemned to death and they buried him and then he rose triumphantly mm -hmm. on the third day um, and so the whole concept of Easter is sometimes refers to as the Christian Passover mm -hmm. the deliverance from death and anguish and pain um, to a new life mm -hmm. and so the church down through the ages continue to celebrate this event and it coincides with the feast of the Passover okay. so that it's if you if you recall those who remember their Sunday school days when the children of, <laughs> um, of, of Egypt were, um, Israel were in Egypt and God delivered them through Moses with the final plague of killing the last child it was that and so the Jews today and this week will be celebrating that event in giving thanks for their deliverance. And so we Christians, we give God thanks for this new deliverance because one of the things that we need to be mindful of that God's original plan was always that man was to live with him to, in harmonious relationship. That has been broken because of sin and so man has drifted further and further away from God and God decided that he would send his son in order to give us the opportunity and one of the things I love to say is that Christians which is very sad do not normally live this life of power and love and celebrate because that's what life is about that's what God is about that's what Easter is about deliverance from death and despair and hopelessness and until Christians understand until Christians begin to celebrate the deliverance that there is new life, there is new hope, there is power in life itself. Um, we will never fully comprehend the goodness of God. Now, Kanan, earlier um, this week, actually, I was having a conversation with someone who said, listen, Easter is a pagan holiday. The only day that should count is Easter Sunday. Well, um, I love to say you can always define what, if you understand the Bible in its context, you'll understand that the week, the only aspect of the life of Jesus that can be followed Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in the Bible is, the, is this last week of his life, which mm -hmm. we call Holy Week. And that is because it led up to. Mm -hmm. And so his triumphant entry in Jerusalem when people proclaimed that's, him as king, they wanted a political Palm Sunday. That's Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. The, yeah. And then the Monday, he went and he cleansed the temple. Mm -hmm. He cursed mm -hmm. the fig tree. He, Tuesday, he went and he sat in the temple and he taught. Mm -hmm. The Wednesday, he went to Simon Peter's mother's home where the woman poured the, 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 the perfume on him and anointed him and um, in preparation for his death when the disciples quarreled that they shouldn't have done that. They could have sold it at, and fed the poor. And then on the Thursday, he went in to Jerusalem to have the feast with his... The celebrate again, the celebration again of the Passover. Remember, mm -hmm. Jesus was a Jew. And so they gathered together as Deuteronomy instructed them how they were to have this celebration. Mm -hmm. So Jesus and his disciples went in. And it was there that he took bread and broke it and took the wine and said this is my blood mm -hmm. and so what is we call today as Christians the communion the Holy Communion started and during that's Holy right day. that is what and that's commandment day that's why we call it moon the Thursday command this you must do as often as you 
as you can. And then the Friday, the Thursday night, this mock trial as it were, because one of the things I find interesting is that the very judge mm -hmm. who made the final decision said the man is innocent, mm -hmm. but yet... He put it to the people. Um, you know, you're going you're gonna to kill him. And so that was the Friday. So he was marched through the street, carrying his cross. He was nailed. He died. They were amazed that he died so quickly. He was taken down. He was buried. Mm -hmm. And then on the Sunday morning, when the woman, his mother, and some other women went, were going to the tomb to try to see how they could anoint this body. Mm -hmm. Today, we wash it and we get the undertaker and they do all sorts of things to the body. Well, that was what the Jews did from then. They would um, prepare the body for burial, mm -hmm. the, the mirror and so on and so forth, in order to give a proper burial. And on the way, they discovered that the tomb was open, this man um, had disappeared. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the Bible gives us the story as to how the Romans said, told the soldiers, Let's pay you to say that it was disciples who came and stole him, etc., etc., and all that. Mm -hmm. So that is really so. Whatever you want to call it, for me, for Christians around the world, every Sunday is an Easter Sunday, mm -hmm. and that's the reason why we worship on Sunday. Because mm -hmm. every because without the resurrection, there would, be no there would be no Christian church. One, without the resurrection, there'll be no hope for mankind. Because Jesus would have simply been another dead prophet, you know, who came, did some good works, spoke some lovely words, and that was the end of the story. And I think that if we understand the power and the love of, that God has for you and for me, that's what Easter is really all about, you know. That this God that we worship has given you life. You know, we continue with the the bitterness in the society around the world, not only here in Belize. Um, and, um, but in truth and in fact, until we begin to appreciate who we are as individuals, you know, you are a special individual. Special not because of your, your beauty, which you are, and not because of your hair and your name and the position that you hold, but because you're created in the image and likeness of God imbued with the power of God within you and I think that until we begin to understand that we will not we will not be able to change this mindset of how we treat each other with so total disrespect I don't care what you want to do you know it is my responsibility as a child of God through the power of the risen Lord to treat you as another human being creating his image in and that is what we are called to celebrate and that is what we are celebrating and that is what we are called to give God thanks for every single day of our lives let's jump into a, a little bit of the um, symbolism that surrounds this time of year because there's some uh, rooted in paganism uh, like the Easter bunny the Easter eggs, etc. Well, well, you see again, um, 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 William, I'm one of those persons because of what I believe, because of who this God is. Easter candy. <laughs> that it does not take away. That is, those are what we call. It's like um, you know, ice cream, mm -hmm. and then you want some sprinkles, sprinklings on top, and the children want the the, the coconut, and they want so far. I mean, because intruded, in fact, egg, which came into a part of the, the Christian um, celebration of tradition is simply to symbolize new life, hope. That's what it symbolizes, that there is life. Easter, without Easter, we are dead. Without Easter, there is no Christian church. You want to, if you think it's paganism, that's fine. But you know, the only way you're going to get a new chick, unless you go and buy it from the Mennonite, is to have an egg and so I think that if we if we can broaden our mind and don't put ourselves in, in little boxes one of the things that I love to say to people both as a as, as a child of God and as a minister of religion is that this God that we worship is bigger than all of us combined and therefore you have no problem questioning him I don't know where we get this notion in Belize and around the world too you're not a flower in the God face ask God anything 
the God that I worship says to me, ask him. That's who he is. I'm not certain that I'll get all the answers. I'm not certain that I'll ever get any answer. But I should not, I should not inhibit and um, define my thing because I cannot ask God these questions. And I think that if we look, or I, I was saying at church only last week, I'm a Belize and I grew up in Belize and I know for instance on Good Friday early before day in the morning there'll be people who will get up and break the white of the egg and put it in a glass and put it in the sun hopefully the sun comes up in the morning huh? and not cloudy and by 12 o'clock they'll go and try and look to see Coffee. what is what, what is their future but well, you don't need nobody to tell you your future you don't need that all you need to do is to trust God and to make your okay. plans that's one of the things I wanted to talk about because for us here in Belize uh, this particular week there is a lot that is built into our cultural traditions now um, and Good Friday especially yes. is one of the most superstitious days yes, yes. Um, from from obviously the regulations with alcohol sales That's right. which is uh, something that uh, is not seen in many other places so uh, that is one of the things that, that we look at and even growing up, you know, you were not allowed to play. You were not allowed to make a lot of noise. I remember noise. where I'm living. You, we you were afraid of Jackie Vasquez. You were not supposed you know? to show, blast music. Yes, it yes, was a yes. very solemn, solemn, solemn yes, yes, day. Yes, yes. You don't jump in the You don't go swimming. At, at 12 o'clock because yeah. you'll turn the mermaid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, and, 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 and that's, that, that, that is fine. If that is what is... If that is what will help to bring you to a greater sense of awareness of who you are, the God that we worship is like that. Yeah. He's not afraid of that. Yeah. No, I, I, I brought it up because I think that it's, it's so important because I know, especially when I was younger, all of these things were very serious. You know, you really knew that you wouldn't be very loud on oh, a yes, Good Friday. Yes. Well, um, and oftentimes, and you have to go to vigil and all the other yes, things yes, that will yes, take place. Yes, yes. How much do you still see these traditions preserved? I think that times have changed mm -hmm. tremendously. I think you see it more and more in the rural areas mm -hmm. than you see it in the urban areas, and for varying reasons. Um, as we were saying, we are now becoming so sophisticated. It's now the iPod, and the, so children can sit there for hours and end and don't even realize that there's somebody else in the room, which is a whole different concept mm -hmm. today, you know. So there, there are changes. Um, I think that there are still those. I love to put it this way. I still think there is a lot of good in maintaining some of these traditions. In that one, it still helps to. That's the only time that some families are together, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the only time. Easter vacation. That's the only time. And isn't that something? Isn't that what we need? Don't we need some grounding? Don't we need some sense of affirmation? Don't we need a sense of being accepted and belonging? But I think as you're talking about that, because we were remarking before we came on air, that Easter was really a time when you travel to families in the destinations nearer to a river or to some that's water. That's right, that's right. And you'd sleep on the floor and bond and everybody, nobody it worried about how many bathrooms the they had. All family and together. Not anymore, yeah. not anymore. For varying reasons. <laughs> it's no playa and, and concon and, Placencia. you know, Placencia. Hotels. I mean, and if you, I, I love to say to my friends, and my friends in Placenza who may be listening, I'm certain they'll be angry with me. Having lived in Placenza for a while, those who don't live in Placenza, Placenza is the worst place to go for, for mm. Easter. In that, I mean, you, you, you are almost, me. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love to say to my friend, the best time to come to Placenza is after Easter Monday. So when the crowd is coming out, you go yeah. in, you know. But, and, and fine, and again, that's what a lot of our children and families are missing. This bonding, which, which is so unimportant, a part of, who you are, you know, ground, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of our children today have no sense of bearing, because they don't even know who, who they are, but just who their relatives are, and the way by which we, we, we live today, we are, we are so insular, yeah. that we forget that another human being is in the house, or that is there with us, and, and that's my 
cousin no that's my aunt as the case and you learn to respect space le and that's right else. that's right because you had your chores i mean you had to get up at a certain time mm -hmm. and make certain other, as if though nobody was at the house you know and so when visitors came during the time we used to laugh my family used to laugh at me because i hated to go on holiday at this time if my mother wasn't going i didn't care what happened if mom wasn't going because I didn't like this darkness at all when they turn off the lamp. <laughs> no, 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 no. So where did, you, where did you know, your family normally go? Normally it was either Mullins River or Gales Point, or we would go to Bamba, yeah. or we would go to St. George's. And rural areas where? Yeah, rural areas again. That was, electricity that was, was not that a part was, of the home. You had to come to the city, yeah. you know. But I, I think that, and I, and I think that the, the church has sought to has the message of helping people to understand. For instance, I say I'm, I'm a priest now for more years than I want to recall, mm. but Palm Sunday in Belize City, um, at least at my church, where I am the pastor, is a bigger celebration than Easter Sunday. And that is because families have their plans, and I say to them, don't apologize for that. Because that's an important part of this whole entire process. Mm -hmm. So if you can go and join your lady and, and your, your siblings that you haven't seen for the whole year, mm -hmm. you're still worshiping God. You're still a part of the whole fellowship. But so long as we understand what it is that we do. I think that the, the challenge that we have, I honestly feel today, is that we are not helping the children um, to understand what it is that we are celebrating. Because it's fine to buy the candies and do the Easter hunt and all that, but let them understand. For instance, um, at, at St. Mary's where I am, the pastor, on Sunday, the Sunday school teachers had their Easter hunt, mm -hmm. you know, and all the children made their baskets the Sunday before at Sunday school. So that Sunday after, when they had their session, they went there Easter hunt and they had to tell the story, what they're looking for, what it's all about, mm -hmm. you know. And I think it's important because I think it gives us an opportunity. I am always so hopeful and that's what makes life what has meaning and value. That this God that we have has forgiven us, reconciled us to himself, mm -hmm. and therefore we can reconcile with each other. One of the sad realities that we seem to miss in the whole story of Easter is not so much that he rose, because we can't do anything about that, mm -hmm. is the moral of the story. Mm -hmm. What did that mean for us? Or what does that mean for us? It means that you and I have been reconciled with God and therefore you have life. And you know, there are lots of people who, and I listen all the time to these radio talks and so on, and people talk about, and they are on their way to heaven. Well, if you, if you can't live right here in Belize with your neighbor and your brother and your sister, and to forgive that one who really hurt you, I know which one in heaven you're going. Because the one that I know about is that it's about forgiveness, and it's about reconciliation. That's the whole purpose why God died, sent his son Jesus to die. It is to reconcile man to God and God to man and therefore by extension to his fellow man. And, if we, and that's why I am persuaded that people, mostly when you, when you meet them, how are you doing? Well, I only to survive. Now, I'm not talking about the physical element. I'm talking about the spiritual well-being. You're only surviving no wonder because you're not happy. You can't forgive you. You're carrying this burden. You did me something yesterday that I haven't got I'm waiting to get the opportunity to either put you on Facebook or to or to malign you. And rather than say, you know, my my lane is all right, I, I still love you and we're still gonna go to that party later. Damn. You know? We don't need to be so angry and bitter. We don't know you know one of the things that I find sad for Belize and for the world, but here we are. There's always this debate about whether we're a God-fearing nation or a Christian nation. Well, of course, you know my, my take. We're not a Christian nation. We are not a Christian nation. Okay. We're a God-fearing nation. That's what our constitution says, but Peter does it mean. And what would be the difference, the difference in your explanation? My explanation? If you say that this is a Christian nation, it means that everybody will follow Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very simple. And that's not true. 
That is not true. But we believe in the supremacy of God. Mm -hmm. So we're a God-fearing nation. Okay. Then, we don't know how to even talk to each other. You know, that is one of the sad... Because it's disrespect. If you cannot respect yourself, how are you going to respect? And that is... I mean, you listen in the streets. You go to the stores. You go to some government offices with respect to some public offices. We don't even know how to talk to. And, and that... And so we... How are we going to stem the tide of the violence and the animosity. Listen to how political leaders address each other. And they think that, that is, they're playing for five minutes on the, um, for, the, for the television. You know, and don't know what that is doing to our children. And listen to how our teachers behave and how they treat the children. You know, those are the realities that comes from a greater sense of who I am. Because if I think that I'm nothing, I'm going to treat you as nothing. And so I can abuse you and say anything that comes to my mouth to you. But if I understand that I am somebody, and I expect that you will treat me with the greatest respect, that is what I... No, I'm, no don't misunderstand me. I'll get mad as hell. But I've got to understand. You know, I was sharing with a group on Monday. Let's take Jesus on that Palm Sunday. Jesus was very lonely, even though the crowd was shouting because they wanted him to be the king that he didn't want to be, mm -hmm. to begin with. Secondly, his disciples had a different concept of what it was all about. You know, and so, but he was focused. And so, though he was lonely, he knew he had to carry this burden alone. And though they were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. He knew that half of them would have been saying by the end of yeah. the week, crucify him. Mm -hmm. Because he did not he would not do what he what they wanted. Let him me to do. let me let me jump in there because that's that's one of the things I think we don't talk about enough. The the values from the from the uh, Story. stories of the, the the final week in the life of Christ and the resurrection. The very same um, uh, what you're saying in terms of Jesus being lonely on Palm Sunday, knowing that he had to execute what he was put on earth to be to able to do, um, knowing that his disciples weren't necessarily, it's like you're a leader in an organization, that's one of the things I envisioned, but you can't get the uh, employees or to, do what you to want. be able to follow in the vision that's that right. you have in mind, um, even though you have handpicked them and know they have the potential. And then even on the day of the crucifixion, uh, the purpose was to save the very same people who then Ooh, turned around right. and said, right. crucify okay. him. Um, and then in his final moments of death, pleading out and, you know, um, to his father. Yes. Um, knowing that, I mean, it was obviously in pain. Um, it's one of the things that is continuously uh, explained every time we talk about the story, the immense pain and suffering that he endured. The values of these stories are so absolutely strong. I think Even with the walking of the cross, and when uh, that's when we hear stories of Mary Magdalene and all these things. So let's talk about I, that. I think that one of the things that the danger that I see constantly in the in the story is that we have become so accustomed to it that we romanticize mm -hmm. rather than the daily implication. To all lives. Um, for instance, because Jesus was focused, he knew what he was setting out to do. He knew that this was a struggle and it was a struggle for him personally. Um, that he got angry and chased them out of the mm -hmm. temple. And then when the Monday, when he when he we are told that he stayed in Bethany, and when he was going back to Jerusalem on the Monday, it wasn't fig season. And yet when he got under the tree and looked for fruit, he cursed the tree. Okay. And then he went back and then he sat and he taught the people. Because and I and I think that too often, um, I think that we do the we do God and at the service by not helping our people to understand. For instance, a third of the four gospels took place that week. Mm -hmm. 
third of the Gospels took place that week. So that putting the pieces together the rest of his life has not been very easy for historians. Mm -hmm. And because nobody is there, you are assuming certain yeah. things. Um, that is one. Secondly, I think if you and I understand our value, our purpose, we will cope with the storms of life. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus teaches us in, the, in this last week. That you, you see, he wasn't ready. When he decided to go to Jerusalem, he decided it was time to face the music, as I mm -hmm. love to say. Because when you read John's gospel, you find that he was an outlaw. So that was the reason why Judas, it was very easy for Judas to go and betray him because there was a price on his head. Mm -hmm. And so he, he was able to, but he knew, this is the time I can't run away anymore. And all of us have to come to that realization in all our lives. At some point in Even our lives. Even with turmoil. That's right. But it's in the turmoil that you, that, yeah. that you walk. I've got to face this. In other words, I might be ill. That's all an example. And I, I don't want to go to the doctor. The more I don't want to go to the doctor, the more I put my family in, in, in anguish mm -hmm. and pain. And at some point, yes, I've got to face the music, get the proper diagnosis, and deal with it. Or whatever. owning up to mistakes or, is a great right. example. Or, like, whatever, whatever it may be. At some point in all our lives, I think that's one of the things that we learn from um, Jesus going into Jerusalem. The time was right for him. You and I have to determine that for ourselves. There's nobody who can determine that. Mm -hmm. And how you feel. And yes, it's not a bed of roses. It's a storm. And in the midst of the storm, you can remain strong and focus and with purpose. And I think that that is one of the things that we learn. Stories of a little boy who used to go to summer school. And for five years, he had the same teacher. And every time she would tell a story, she would say the moral of the story is. So when he went into a new class, <laughs> the teacher, his mother said, how was um, Sunday school today? And he said, mom, it's a very good, he said, but teacher had no morals. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I think that we Christians are missing. Yeah. Right. What does this really, really tell us? Let's, and, and I will be the first to tell you, go and celebrate, enjoy yourself but understand why we are celebrating. Mm -hmm. It's like when we talk about Christmas, what's the reason of celebrating Christmas? It's the very same for Easter. Easter is about new life, new hope. If we cannot forgive, if we cannot let go, it will simply be another day. Let, let me ask a, a quick question because um, obviously you talk about the Gospels chronicling the, um, the, life, of the life of Jesus, Jesus. and also Holy Week. Recently, um, I like documentaries, so I've been watching this one with the uh, Finding the, Jesus, the Gospel of Judas. Okay, that has okay. been. Okay. I, I'm not sure okay. if you. Yes, um, yes, yes. Have been I have following the, that I have, the, I have the book. Yeah. I have the book. And it's very interesting because even Judas and what he did on the Wednesday leading up is considered still something that people don't want to discuss, or they don't. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about that. And um, it, when you look at the debate itself, people, you know, it's not even a line in the sand. I mean, people really get uh, upset mm -hmm. about that yeah, whole yeah. Um, issue with Judas. Well, we call people Judas. Yeah. Judas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's it, even with the discovery of a book like that, how does it shape um, religious faith? Because Okay. I, and I ask you this question because earlier you said something about um, debating the Bible or, or asking, asking questions, questions mm -hmm. and stuff. And when religion also uh, very often talks about blind faith, that things will happen. And um, some people say, well, Judas was chosen by God to do this particular well, act. Well, 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 first of all, you need to remember, <laughs> we need not to forget that evil began in heaven in the very presence of God we should never forget that but coming back to Judas if I quickly there are many other books written by 
others persons who lived in that time relating around you who did not make the bible okay because when the bible when the bible was chronicled and the canons were being put together it was decided that these were the books that, that have enough evidence and context in the life of Christ that grants you salvation. Reading those, you're all right. So that it's not that the church has, um, for want of a better word, um, decided to be, to be censored <laughs> is a better word. It was felt then uh, that when the Bible was put together, the canons, and that is what we call the um, compiling of the, the Bible, these are the books that contain enough information but without some, question. But some people feel as if though that in itself was an act of control well, by yeah, the church. But, 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 um, but, but have, God is a God of control. You've got, you, you either do this or do that. God says this and I've made you and I put you. You choose this or this. It's up to you. But the point is we've got to make, because I think that that is exactly what I want to um, um, re relate to you on. It's a matter of choice. You've got to make a choice in your life whether you want to be happy or not. You have got to make, and I know we blame everybody. And I know, I mean, that's a part of who we are. Um, Adam and Eve never wanted to own up to their wrong. So poor Adam blamed poor Eve, and then Eve blamed the serpent, and, and, the, and the list con continues. But in truth and in fact, um, for us as a church, people of faith, we believe that this book, and of course, you know, there is debate about even this book because, um, you know, they're the Apocrypha. Yeah, I was going to. And um, there are those, I was on another radio station some time ago, and I smiled. And I said, well, you know, the Bi it's more than 66 books in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And somebody called and said, I know what kind of pastor here. And, uh, and you know, and I yeah. smile. Like I, and then I'm sorry because. People have really forgotten. They've forgotten yeah. that or aspect of it. Perhaps have never been educated. Never been educated yeah. in the point. That is the point. Yeah. That because, is the point. And again. And this is where the literal. Yes, yes. Uh, interpretation interpretation of the Bible. That's right. That's right. Oftentimes you know, leads so to. So this is where we, as, as, as a children. And that's the reason why I love to say. And I make no apologies for this to my congregation. We need to get into a discussion on this. Because this is about me and you and our understanding of, and the way how you will interpret it and the way how mm -hmm. he interprets it is never the same. And, but that doesn't mean that he's wrong and you're right. It means that what, if you have a common bond, mm -hmm. then it's. Oh, one well, of it's what we see in some of the Gospels, while exactly the accounts right. are not, not the same. exactly the same. That's exactly right. As a matter of fact, you know, I tell people, there's only one story in the Bible, in the Gospels, that all four Gospel writers agree on. All four. And that is the feeding of the 5,000. And yet, each one give a different take. Because it's like you and William going and um, covering the parade mm -hmm. and William will give his take from his vantage point mm -hmm. and you are beside him but you're seeing something completely mm -hmm. different and I think that if we understand that the God that we serve man isn't in a box and that is a problem that we're getting into but we have people today who have become now new theologians who put this God in a little box and you're not to peep out because the moment that you peep out you're going to dig out your eye one, I know we're getting ready to wrap, but one of the other things that we uh, that is being heavily debated, there's really a, fan, uh, a fantastic series. I think it runs on um, CNN. CNN. Uh, it has been running Jesus. Yes, yes. A whole thing on yes, a historical yes. perspective. It's, histor it, it's on um, History Channel as goes as well at the same time. Um, yeah, it's what, really what, fascinating. HD, um, the, what, what do you call it? I don't know the hive. <laughs> I don't know, but my children will laugh at me when I get home, but whatever, whatever. But, but it's a good series indeed. It, and it's, it's been running series. on Sunday nights, talking yes. about the life and contributions yes. of Jesus and yes. everything else. Now, even around this time, um, there are things that we still do in Belize, going back to how they tie into what we do, and one of them is hot cross buns. And people talk about the cross and the significance of it, and whether uh, I, I saw a, a, a a piece on whether any man could be 
nailed onto a cross and their body would actually have yes, yes. how they had to be tied, how they, you know, everything. And there's always great debate about how things happen. And of course, we wish there was a machine that could take us back 2,000 <laughs> uh, years or whatever back to see how things were actually done. But should those things uh, really shake your faith? In no way, in any, I was saying to somebody the other day, if, if I hear the archaeologists one day, you remember they had about two years ago, they said they found the, 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 ca the casket that buried, that Jesus was buried in. Mm -hmm. And then, and I said, all it proves to me that he lived. <laughs> That's all. I think if we, if we understand the God that we worship, here is a God, here is an, in a, a more excellent way that you and I could live. That's really what it is, you know. It is to be able to say to everyone listening and hearing me this morning, one, you are very, very special. Two, the reason why you are special because you are created in his image and in his likeness and possess some of the qualities and attributes of God himself. And one of the or some of the attributes of God is love and forgiveness. That is, in, you need to, there's a song that people love to sing. Mm -hmm. I'm only human. You know that song? Mm -hmm. I'm only whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. That song is not quite true. You are not only human, you're also divine. And so it's the divine and the human that link together. That's who Jesus was. And we see in, particularly in Mark's gospel, the humanness of Jesus many times. Mm -hmm. John gives more the divine aspect of the life and ministry of Jesus. But it's putting them together. What has happened is that we have allowed the humanness to overarch the divine and forget that you, within you, there is this wonderful child of God who can love who can forgive, who can care, who can listen, who can respect, so that you may create and live the quality of life that God intended from the very beginning for you. And that is really what Easter is about. God has restored life and said to me, this miserable sinner, come, come. You know, it's like going into the presence of the queen I remember when the Queen the both visits to Belize, boy, that was a busy time for so many people, you know. That is really what, here I'm coming in the presence of God every day, every day. And I can live, I can see, good morning William, how are you? And you don't, and I don't, I tell people as a Christian, I don't tell you good morning because I know you, of course if I know you, I'm, and now I'm getting blind so I may not see you, so. <laughs> But I, when I see human beings, I greet them because I am another human being, mm -hmm. created in the image and like, not because I want you to answer me, so I don't get angry if you don't answer. I'll oh, stop, heal, Marlene, mm -hmm. can you not heal me? I say, go on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? That, that's <laughs> my problem. The blind <laughs> that is what he says about. It is to restore life. It is to reconcile us. And, and the church has a problem because we don't like to talk about reconciliation. We don't want to talk about forgiveness. Forgive that, Easter they come, they better hide the bun, the curry going with the very sugar. <laughs> we are so willing to beat down, we're not willing to live. You know, one of the things, when Jesus appeared, as if though it was night and day, he never said to the disciples, oh, so you, that you run away from me, you said you did. He did, peace be unto you. Because he was himself. And that is what we are called to be. But, All right, and that's a great uh, closing yeah. point for this segment because we're completely out of time. I want thank to you thank you so, you so much. very much for the invitation. Yes. And I want to wish all a very blessed, safe, holy, and wonderful Easter. Thank you thank very you much, much Kenneth. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, it's a talk about water safety, so stay tuned. <laughs>